In this short video, we're going to talk about the Laplace transforms of the derivatives of functions and then apply them to solve linear initial value problems. So let's see if we can find a formula for the Laplace transform of f prime of t. So our input function is the derivative of f. We don't know what f is. It's just a formula that we use, f prime of t. So using the definition, we would have to take the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times f prime of t. And the way that we're going to handle that is we're going to use integration by parts. We're going to say that dv is f prime of t, and so v would be just f of t. Um, u is e to the negative st, so dv is negative s e to the negative st. So we'd have to then, uh, we're going to change the upper bound from infinity to b. We're going to take the limit as b goes to infinity. We're going to have uv, which gives me the e to the negative st f of t. And we're assuming that this limit is going to exist and that s is positive. And then we would have um, the integral of v du. And so that's going to have, normally we'll be subtracting, but we have a minus s, so that's how we get a plus here. And remember, the S is treated as a constant in the integration, so we can factor it out in front. And you see then that S is multiplied by the integral, which would give us the Laplace transform of F of t. So the second part, the integral, is just going to be S times the Laplace transform of F of t. Let's see what happens with the first term when we put in the bounds. So if I want to put in b, I'll have e to the negative sb times f of b. That we're going to assume is going to go to 0, but then I still have this minus f of 0. And this is in letter s here times the plus transform of f of t. And so that tells me that to find the Laplace transform of the derivative, then I would have to just take s times the Laplace transform of the function and then subtract off this initial value f of 0. So that's very useful. Not only that, because it has this nice recursive formula, we could just take the same thing and replace f prime with f double prime. And so that would be then s times the plus transform of f prime minus f prime of 0. So again, what I did is I replaced the f prime with f double prime. And so its antiderivative will be f prime. And the initial condition will be that we have to subtract off is minus f prime at 0. Well, we already have a formula above for the Laplace transform of f prime of t. So when I substitute that in, now instead of having s times the Laplace transform of f prime, I have s squared of the Laplace transform of f minus s times f evaluated at 0. And then I still have the minus f prime evaluated at 0. And so I could continue this, say, for uh, the third derivative of f, and so on. So what happens if you have a differential equation and you take the Laplace transform of both sides, every term on both sides of the differential equation? Well, as long as it has constant coefficients, uh, it just becomes an algebraic equation in the Laplace transform, or the output function, y of s. 
and remember that the uppercase y means that that's the Laplace transform of lowercase y of t. So how can we use this to solve an initial value problem? Well, we're going to start with the differential equation. We want to apply the Laplace transform to both sides. That will give us a algebraic equation with s and y of s in it. And then we're going to solve that for y of s and then apply the inverse Laplace transform. So we need to use quite a bit of algebra in that process. But in the end, we get a solution y of t of the original initial value problem. So let's look at an example. Here we have a first order linear differential equation with constant coefficients. And we're given the initial condition that y of 0 equals 6. And we need the, the initial condition. Remember why? Because when I apply the formula for the Laplace transform of y prime, then I'm going to get s times the Laplace transform of y minus y evaluated at 0. So what I did here when I applied the Laplace transform is I went ahead and factored out the constant in front of the Laplace transform. Uh, so let's go through it. Uh, this one is not too bad. Uh, again, just using the formula for the Laplace transform of the derivative, I'll get s times the Laplace transform minus the input function evaluated at 0. And again, here the Laplace transform of y is what we're calling uppercase y of s. And then I need to find the Laplace transform of sine of 2t. So I could refer to my table. Uh, that's going to be s squared plus 2 squared and 2 on the top. And so that gets multiplied by 13. So now we're going to replace uh, y of 0 with 6. That's a given value. And we are going to go ahead and solve this equation for y of s. So what did I do here? I saw that capital, capital Y, uppercase Y, is multiplied by s and then plus 3. So let's put those in coefficients in parentheses. Multiply it times a single y. Still have the minus 6. And so just do the algebra. And we'll add 6 to both sides, divide both sides by s plus 3. And we get this expression in s, and we want to find the inverse Laplace transform of that. That would be the solution to the initial value problem. Well, the second term here is going to be straightforward. That's just going to be uh, e to the a t some constant out in front. In fact, uh, an a is going to equal uh, negative 3. Remember, it's always going to be the opposite. So for the first term, though, I need to do some more work. Uh, and the work that I needed to do is uh, partial fractions. So um, I'm going to find the partial fractions decomposition. I have two factors. One is a quadratic factor. So that would mean that on top I would have a constant times s plus another constant. And then the second factor is linear. So I would just have a single constant over that. I would solve this in the usual way. So I'm going to rule out the details. Uh, and I get the coefficients of uh, negative 2, 6, and uh, c equals 2. Uh, and so I'm going to have, again, with this as plus b, I'll break that into two fractions because when I have just s on top, that reminds me of cosine. And if I just have a number on top, that reminds me of sine. In fact, in a previous example, we actually calculated the inverse Laplace transform of this first term uh, where a equals negative 2 and b equals 6. We'll go through the details again. 
Now for the third term, notice that I already have something over s plus 3. And now I have another term, which is divided by s plus 3. And on top is the 2. So I'm going to go ahead and write those as a single fraction. So that would be 6 plus 2 all over s plus 3. So that's why I have a 2 plus 6 in front of the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 3. So I should get um, cosine of 2t multiplied by negative 2 in my first term. I'm going to have to break up this 6 as 3 times 2. And then we need the 2 inside the Laplace transform in order to get the sine of 2t. And then this is just going to be 8 times e to the power of negative 3t. And that's what I got there. All right, let's try a second order differential equation with constant coefficients. Uh, I allowed two initial values, one for the function and one for the derivative. So we're given that uh, y evaluated at 0 is 1, and the y prime is evalu evaluated at 0 is 5. So let's take the Laplace transform of each term. Again, I'll factor out the constants. So I'll factor out the 3 from the y prime and the 2 from the y. I'll use the formula then for L of y double prime. And then that was s squared times uppercase y minus s times lowercase y evaluated at 0. And then subtract off y prime evaluated at 0. So I'll go ahead and factor out the uh, minus 3 in my uh, y prime term. And so then I went ahead and substitute the formula for the Laplace transform of y prime. I also have uh, Laplace transform of 2y. And finally, the Laplace transform of e to the negative 4t. You can look that up as being 1 over uh, s plus 4. So our next step is to solve for uppercase y. We'll go ahead and substitute our given values for y of 0 and y prime of 0. I've got to be a little careful with the signs here. I'll have a negative 3 times a uh, negative 1 here. So that's how I get the plus 3. So I'll combine those like terms. I'll have what, s minus 2, negative s minus 2. So I'll add s, I'll add 2 to both sides, then divide by s squared minus 3s um, plus 2. And s squared minus 3s plus 2 factors as s minus 2 times s minus 1. So here you have a choice. Um, you could write this as a single fraction and then do the partial fractions decomposition of that one single fraction. I elected to do two partial fraction decompositions. It just looked like it was going to be easier. Um, it's really up to you what you're more comfortable with. So I did a partial fractions decomposition for the first fraction and then for the second fraction. Uh, and then I have to be careful because now I'm going to have like terms. So I'm going to have uh, for something over s minus 2, I have to have my values for a and then I have to add my value for e to get what's going to be the coefficient for the 1 over s minus 2 term. And then for the 1 over s minus 1 term, I'll have to add b from the first partial fractions decomposition to f 
whatever I get from the second partial fraction's decomposition. You're going to get the same answer, whether you do it, write it as a single fraction and then by the partial fraction's decomposition, or keep them separate and then collect the like terms. So collecting the like terms then, um, I'm going to get uh, well, 4 plus 1 sixth over s minus 2, and then negative 3 minus 1 fifth over s minus 1, and then 1 over 30 over s plus 4. So really what I want to think about that is those are linear multipliers, so just constant multipliers times the expression of 1 over s minus 2, or 1 over s minus 1, or 1 over s plus 4. And the reason why we do that is, is we should recognize that these expressions are the uh, Laplace transform of e to the power of a t. So then the inverse Laplace transform, when I apply it, is going to give me, uh, well, 25 over 6 times e to the 2t. That's because I have s minus 2 minus 16 over 5 e to the power of t, because I have s minus 1, and then plus 1 over 30 e to the negative 4t. It's negative 4 because I have s plus 4.